a few weeks ago, well, actually it's been like a month ago, was we did the Advent season. So it was right, at, right before the Advent season, uh, we were finishing up the Exodus series, and I, we talked about the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant is a picture of our hearts, and one of the things that, with, that is within that Ark is Aaron's, Aaron's staff, and Aaron's staff represented that deeply embedded within all of our hearts is an identity as a priest, as someone who serves our God and our Savior. And the week after that, Vince had said, uh, <clears throat> finishing up the week of a cold or something. So. A, week, a week, I don't like that. Oh, he's like, if people leave stuff on this, it, it irritates me. And then I was going to put my coffee cup on. That was stupid. Um, I shouldn't have said stupid either, but whatever. Um, a week after that, Vince had made a comment in his sermon about deeply embedded within our hearts is sin. And so we, we have this living within our lives as Christians in our flesh, that I struggle in my flesh, but yet deeply embedded within my heart as a Christian is an identity as a priest. And so I'm constantly waging that war. And my goal my, as a Christian is I want to live to honor God. And so this month, as we think about the beginning of the year, I want us just to think each week about various ways we live to honor God. And the Psalms are these honest to God kinds of prayers. And so all this month, we're going to look at various psalms this month. This prayers is our heart's desire to live to honor God. So today we're going to start with Psalm chapter 119, 176 verses. We're not going to read all of it. 176 verses made up as 22 sections of eight verses each. Do you, in, in most of your Bibles or your Bibles should have, if you're at Psalm chapter 119, we're going to start at verse 97. They have these Hebrew words at the beginning of each of those eight verses. It's an acrostic poem. So Psalm chapter 119, in, the, in, in, in English, it would, we would say it's basically the A, A to Z of the Bible, of, of the psalmist's love and desire and, and passion for the Word of God. So uh, Aleph is the, is the Hebrew A, the first letter, and so Psalm 119, verse 1, you should have as a heading above those first eight verses, the, either the symbol of that or the A-L-E-P-H -E -E there. Each verse of Psalm 119, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, all starts with the letter A in Hebrew. It's a pretty amazing poem in Hebrew when you see how it's actually laid out, that the first eight verses all start with the letter A, this next eight all start with the letter B, and so it's this huge acrostic. Rick, I don't think Rick Ravine's here this morning, but he would love this. He loves this poem. I'm sure it's his favorite chapter in the Bible because it's this beautiful acrostic poem, but it's the psalmist under the inspiration of God writing and saying, this is how much I love your word from A to Z in the Hebrew. So starting at uh, verse 97, we're going to just pick up there. Chapter 119, verse 97 of, Psal of, of the Psalms. He says this, Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all the day. Your commandment makes me wiser than my enemies, for it is ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the aged, for I keep your precepts. I hold my feet back from every evil way in order to keep your word. I do not turn aside from your rules, for you, you have taught me. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your precepts I gain understanding, therefore I hate every false way. We'll pause there a second. In other words, he's saying, oh, how I love your law. Oh, how I love your word. I love it. I love your words. I love its instruction. It is my meditation all day long. Where all throughout my day, I'm thinking about the things that I read in your word. All day long, I'm thinking about what it is you're saying to me. Oh, how I love your law. He said, it's sweeter than honey to my mouth. When you think of the Bible and how you describe it, is that how we often <laughs> describe it? Or when you talk to other people about, what are you doing this morning? I'm reading the Bible. Why? Because it's sweeter than honey to my mouth. I mean, we don't really think that way, right? Let's be honest. Many of us think, well, I have to read the Bible because that's what we're supposed to do. It's kind of a chore. And, and, and we get 
remember, he's, he's talking about the law, too, from the Old Testament perspective. So a lot of what he's talking about is Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. So he's reading in the book of Levit Leviticus this morning and about all the blood sacrifices and different things. And he's saying, oh, how I love your law. It's sweeter than honey. It's my mouth. There was this, this almost desperation for, this need for, if I, I don't know that I can survive without your word and your laws and your, and, your, and, your, and your words being written on my heart. Oh, how I love it. In the next eight verses, Psalm chapter 119, there, 105. I'm just giving you two sections of these eight verses just to give you a, a, a little sampling of this. So starting at 105 now, he says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I have sworn an oath and confirmed it to keep your righteous rules. I'm severely afflicted. Give me life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept my free will offerings of praise, O Lord, and reach and teach me your rules. I hold my life in my hand continually, but I do not forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, but I do not stray from your precepts. Your testimonies are my heritage forever, for they are the joy of my heart. I incline my heart to perform your statutes forever to the end. Oh, how I love your law. And next we see he begins this with, your word is a lamp to my feet. I absolutely love your law. I love the Bible. I love its teachings. I love what it's telling me. I love its instruction. I love its reminders. I even love its conviction. I mean, I'm weird that way. I hope some of you are. I hope all of us are that I think a good Bible reading time, I think a great sermon ought to kick me in the butt sometimes. If I don't ever leave church feeling like I've been kicked in the stomach or punched in the stomach a little bit, I don't know that we're doing a good enough job. One person agrees with me, you know. I won't, I won't pick names, but I, so I've been taking this class last few weeks. I stopped. I was kind of sick this last week, but at 4.15 on Thursdays, I don't go to this class as a physical training class, and the person's in this room, but I don't go to their class because I, I wish it was just kind of a sit down and let's talk about our feelings. But it's a workout class that I hurt for the next five days afterward. Now, how stupid it would be if in the middle of that class, actually, I do this a lot, but to say, hey, could we just chill out a little bit here? <laughs> like, like, let's relax. Like, what's all the deal here? No, the point of it is just to kick your butt a little bit so that you're hurting. I mean, the old adage is what? No pain, no gain, right? It's the same thing with Scripture. I mean, it's not just always this flowery meadow I'm sitting in and saying, oh, God's Word is wonderful and, and it's beautiful and it tells me how great I am. It, it's also times when it's, boy, it, it challenges me. It, it rocks me to my core. I, what I see in its pages is, is I'm not there yet. I'm not that person, but I want to grow in that. I want to be better in that. I, I want to be... I want, to, I want to grow as a person, as, as an individual. I don't want somebody just telling me that, hey, everything's okay. You know, I, I mean, if, uh, baseball was huge to me growing up. I, I, the, my, the best coaches I had weren't sitting around saying, as I struck out like eight times in a row, hey, good job. You know, everything's wonderful. You're doing amazing. You know what? We're going to bat you fourth because you're just doing so well. No, it's, listen, if you don't get this worked out, we're, you're not going to be even, on, you're going to be on the bench. So we've got to figure this out. But a good coach would come and say, you're doing it wrong. This isn't right. Your habits are off. This is wrong. Let's fix this. Let's work on the swing. And it's the same thing in our lives spiritually. Why is it that that makes sense when we're talking about sports, physical exercise, when, it, when I'm talking about my, my portfolio or anything? Why does that make sense? But spiritually, sometimes when we come to a church and we think, well, that guy was a little too harsh today. I don't like that. I'm going to go somewhere else. There's something that happens with God's word and our ears that want to just be tickled and told that, hey, everything's wonderful. You guys are doing amazing. Everything's good. There's a place to be affirmed. There's a place for encouragement. But there's also a place and a time for your, your word speaks life and conviction and truth that sometimes I don't want to hear. And he says, your word is a lamp to my feet. How could I, my feet possibly know where to go if, they, if there is no lamp, if there's no light? I'm just walking around aimlessly in darkness. 
And I fear many of us get into that pattern in that place. He says, your word is a lamp unto my feet. I have sworn an oath and I've confirmed it to keep your righteous rule. I may not always want to do everything in this book. I may not even always agree, agree with everything in this book. But I have sworn an oath and I've confirmed it to keep your righteous rule. So maybe as a New Year's resolution, it's I want to swear an oath before God in this congregation that this book is my life. Jesus Christ is, is my salvation. He is my life. But I don't know who he is apart from this book. And so I swear an oath, and I confirm it today, that this book will be my life and my guide. It will be a light unto my feet, and I will read it. I will meditate upon it. I will study it. I will get to know it. He says in verse 101 of the, of the first eight verses that we read there, I love this. He says, I hold back my feet from every evil way in order to keep your word. There will be a thousand other things if you decide today that this week I'm going to dedicate my life to the Bible and I'm going to study it and I'm going to read it. There will be a thousand other things that will come up each and every day to distract you from that, to keep you from it, to stop you from doing the things that you know you should do. Get up earlier. But I can't get up. i got to go to work. You don't know what time I get up. And, and it, I, every time I start talking about reading the Bible, people start hyperventilating, telling me how busy they are, and their lives are so... Okay, settle down. Settle down. Make the time for it. Find the time for it. Do you know how many hours a month I waste watching Seinfeld reruns? I have every one of them memorized. I don't even know why I'm watching it. There is wasted time in all of our days that I can say, I want to redeem this time for something that will bring meaning and value to my life and to my soul. Your word is, is a lamp unto my feet, and I hold my feet back from every evil way. When my flesh, that embedded sin nature, is telling me, go this route. No, I won't go that route. I can't go that route. I won't do it. This class I take on Thursdays, the, 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 every Thursday at lunch, I want to go to Wendy's and eat like two spicy chicken sandwich meals, super king-sized, whatever. And I know that I need to hold my feet back from evil because it's a horrible evening if I do that. It, there's times where I say, I want to do this and it's good and it's what's right, but I need to hold my feet back from evil so that I can keep your word. And, and the pattern of this becomes verses 111 and 112, praying and living God's word, praying and living God's word. This is the pattern I hope we can see this morning. If you read all of Psalm 119, all 176 verses, you will see this as a pattern. Pray and live God's word. Pray and live God's word. It talks about uh, in, in uh, 111 and 112 again to read those. Your testimonies are my heritage forever. They are the joy of my heart. I incline my heart to perform your statutes forever to the very end. So this pattern of praying and living God's word, it begins with storing up God's word in my heart. We saw that in verse uh, 111. Actually, in Psalm 119, verse 11, earlier in 119, it says, I've stored your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. I've stored it up inside of me. I've stored up your word. I've read it. I've studied it. I've pondered upon it. And it's all up inside of me so that when something happens or something bad happens, it, it's this Holy Spirit autopilot kind of thing. Jesus tells the disciples later that when you're brought before the courts or when something bad happens in your life, don't worry about that because you, I will bring through the Holy Spirit to remembrance the things that I've taught you. I will help you remember. Oh, I, it's not in the notes, but my favorite, and, I've, and many of you probably have never heard this, but my, one of my favorite lines on this, when I was at uh, Malone College and Bible College, one of my professors used to pray this before every, every uh, uh, test. He would pray something to the effect of this. Lord, be with these students today. Calm their nerves. Help them in any anxieties. Please do not give them any new revelations today but help them remember that which they have studied. As Christians, sometimes, we want either the Bible for dummies or the, I just want the right answer when I need it, but I'm not going to read it. And so when God, when like I'm faced with a trial and a temptation, I want to just be quoting from the book of Hezekiah like this. Does anyone pick up on that? Hezekiah is not a book in the Bible, but um, I want to be quoting like from Lamentations is open right here. You've never read it, 
but yet you want God to give it to you. And so I love the prayer of that, Lord. Help them remember that which they've studied. Help them to remember that which they've stored up in their heart. And when the time and the trial comes, God, Jesus tells us in the New Testament, the Holy Spirit then will help you remember what I've taught you. Don't cheapen the work of this. Don't think that we can just show up and not study, not read, not prepare. There's a diligence that comes with this. I love your law. I love your word. Your word is a lamp unto my feet. Therefore, I pray it and I store it up in my heart. And throughout the Bible, Psalm 119, I put these, I think, in the bulletin and the notes might be on the website. Jeremiah 15, 16, Ezekiel 3, Revelation chapter 10. There's this imagery of eat this scroll where an angel will come before the prophets or, the, or, the, or, or whoever they're speaking to and, and they'll say, here's God's word, eat this. Eat this scroll. Eat this book. Eat this word. There's this imagery of I stored up God's word in my heart. Why? Because I was eating the word. We don't talk that way that often enough. I don't think that's the way the Hebrews definitely would talk throughout the scripture. What are you doing? I am eating the Bible this morning. If somebody calls you tomorrow, what are you doing? Okay, you want to go to breakfast in the morning? I cannot. Because I want to be so full from eating the Bible. I'm literally eating my Bible tomorrow. And I'm storing it up inside of me. Why? So that I can live the text and obey it. And that one, verses 111 and 112. Uh, Again, your testimonies, they're my heritage forever. This is my life. They're the joy of my heart. Verse 112, I incline my heart to perform your statutes, to live the text. I store it up in my heart. I eat this book and I live the text so that I can obey it. I perform your laws. This is not play acting. This is not like you signed up to, to be in a show and you signed up to be the lead part in the role of Macbeth, or I don't even know if that, if that made sense, but to, to the lead part of whatever it is. This is not play acting. Why do Christians have such a bad name and a bad reputation? What is the number one thing that everybody would say? Well, I'm not going to go to church because it's full of hypocrites. A hypocrite is, is, is actually a Greek word that just means play actor. It's one who plays a part, who plays a role. So there are many Christians that play a part. I read it. I, I got enough in me to be dangerous. And so I go out into the world and tell everybody, hey, you're not doing the right stuff and God's going to send you to hell. And I play a part. I perform like I'm on a stage. But yet if we saw behind the curtain we would see a very, very different picture. My family, brothers, sisters, that should not be the case. Is it the case for all of us in some little area of our lives? Absolutely. I know it is. I know it is. None of us are immune to that. If somebody says it's not, step back from them. It is... I store up your word. I eat this book so that I can live and obey and perform your law. Not as a play actor to be fake, but so that I can live the text that it actually just becomes a part of my natural everyday life. Have you ever been in a situation where something happened and you've spent some time and you know you've spent some time reading and eating the book, storing it up in your heart and you were faced with some difficult circumstance, somebody cut you off, somebody said something to you and you went, you, I didn't normally react the way I would have normally reacted. There was, there was just this natural, I'm not saying you went to him and said, Jesus loves you. you know, Thanks for punching me in the face, but Jesus loves you. But you didn't react from the flesh, but you actually reacted from something different? And have you ever caught yourself and think, whoa, where did that come from? I know where it comes from. It comes from, I've been storing up God's word. I've been eating this book. And when faced with a difficult circumstance, when something happened, you just happened, it just happened naturally. Why, why do you practice in any sport? Uh, this last year with, with Hannah's team and the, and the girl, little girl softball team, it's like, hey, the coaches is boring. This is stupid. I don't want to do these drills. The drills we're doing here today literally are pretty much the same drills that you would be doing if you're on the Cleveland Indians. Why? You do the same thing, same thing, same thing. Field Falcons in the room, Coach Larry Wiles. 
My baseball coach in high school used to dr drill on us all the time. He would say one thing. He goes, guys, baseball is a game of repetition. You either get better or you get worse. You never stay the same. Life is the same way. It's a game of repetition. And so I read it and I study it and I read it and I study it so that when faced with the circumstance, I react. Not based on my flesh, based on my ideas, but based on the movement of the Holy Spirit. God bringing to remembrance and it just becomes natural. The pattern of the Psalms, the pattern of Psalm 119, definitely, is pray and live the text. Pray and live the text. Store up God's Word. Study it. Eat this book. Read it and live the text. Pray it so that we can live it. Study it. Eat it so that we live it for the world around us. That's the pattern of Scripture. It's not just read it, check it off my list, and I'm done. It's pray it so that I can live it. Now, there's a, there's a practice to this, I believe. I, I, I'm a big proponent of practicing and studying anything and having habits that we daily get into. And I just want to share one as we close this today. It's to say, okay, that's the pattern of scripture. Go. I would rather give you at least a pattern and a habit. There is an, an, an really an ancient art form, a, a, a formal process that was put together called Lecto Divina. And some of you have been in some of my classes or membership class maybe we talked about it or, or a Bible study class that we've been. It's a process called Lecto Divina. Lecto Divina just means sacred reading. It's a sacred reading of the text. So I would encourage us to develop the practice of divine reading sacred reading of the text. You might have a thousand different ways in this room of ways we study the text. That's great. That's fine. But I would encourage you to think about it this way. And Lecto Divina is a formal process that was put together. It, it, uh, like sixth century is where it really is started to root it in and say sacred uh, or div uh, Lecto Divina became a, a term that was put together. But honestly, it's rooted right into this. When, when God tells uh, Jeremiah, eat this book, it's Lecto Divina. That's what it is. It's sacred reading. Spend time devouring this word. Now that might sound like hours and hours of time and I've got to be able to read Greek and Hebrew and all that. No, you do not. You take your Bible, whatever translation you use. What's the best translation to use? What, whatever the one you got in your hand is the best translation. Uh, just real quick, as a little commercial with this, there'll be, there's a lot of different people in the world that will tell you there's a one particular kind of translation or you got to use this one or that one, and all the other ones are trying to dupe you or trying to trick you. Uh, I don't debate those people. I just lovingly say Jesus loves you, and I, I, and I just move on. But if you want to debate and argue that, talk to Vince or Rick. They would love to talk that more with you. I don't care to talk that more with you. No Bible's trying to trick you, Okay. So what, what's the best you want you have to read and use? It's the one you got in your hand. Whatever translation. If you want to talk philosophies of translation and what their purpose is, I'd love to talk to you about that and find one that might be the best fit for you. We're doing a lot of baseball stuff today, so it's like, a, it's like finding a good glove. I mean, there's, a lot, there's lots of different gloves you could use. There's lots of different ones, and there'll be 20 different people to tell you what the best one is. And I would have a different opinion about what they would have an opinion. I would say, I'm right and they're wrong. Okay. But in the end, it's all going to catch a baseball. <laughs> so, here's Lecto Divina. You take your text. You read the text. You meditate upon the text. You pray the text. And you live the text. You read it. Meditate upon it. Pray it. And you live it. Okay? I don't know. Do we have that verse to put on the screen? This verses 111 and 112. If, if we have those, Josh, to put up there. If I'm going to read them. Just to give you an example of what... We're talking about. So here's Psalm 119, 111 to 112. This might be my daily reading for this morning, and I want to practice Lecto Divina. How do I do it? Well, I sit. The practice traditionally is read it three different times. Your testimonies are my heritage forever, for they are the joy of my heart. I incline my heart to perform your statutes forever to the end. And I read it, and I think about it. I spend a little bit of time. It take, this takes a little time. I don't need to consult a, a Hebrew dictionary right now. I don't need to look up any other words behind it. I just read it, and I think, what are, what's a word in there that just comes to mind? It, 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 as you read that, is there a per, just shout it out. Anybody? Like, huh? Joy. Anybody else? Like, what's a word that just, what? Heritage. Heart. Testimonies. Forever. Now Now watch. Whatever word hit you for a particular reason, that might be God speaking something into you. Why does that mean something to you and other, someone else? I didn't even see heritage in there. I didn't even see joy in there. Why is it to you? You just wrestle with that a little bit. 
and you spend time reading it. Something that is kind of cool to do is when you go through the second reading, read a different translation just to see if they might, it, might, it might bring a word out that's a little bit different. So you read it again a second time. Your testimonies are my heritage forever. Now, this is, this is like what glove to use. This is my opinion. Don't, don't, don't. You, you, can, you can email in, or uh, Facebook about how I'm stupid on this one, okay? Because I won't see it. But I, my opinion, my opinion, th- this is a difficult process on a screen. I, this is my opinion. I like books. I like holding books. I like writing in books. I carry this with me, or Bibles with me all over. And you take a pencil, and I love sitting and just circling and writing and, and, and making notes. I love it. You want to know a really cool thing that you can do with that later then? is store it up, hold on to it, write it, mark it up, and think of somebody special in your life. I got my Bible that I use in my office, the, the one that I carry with me. I got a picture in the front of it of the person that I'm giving that Bible to in maybe five years. And I'm writing notes in it, and I'm storing things up in it, and I'm underlining and highlighting in about five years. I'm going to give it to this person. And I pray sometimes in mind with that person that's getting my Bible. I, I just love using this. That's a commercial. That's for free. Your testimonies are my heritage forever for the joy of my heart. I incline my heart to perform your statutes forever to the end. The second time as you're reading through, you're praying and you're asking, what are, what are phrases that come to mind? I was thinking words before. What are, what are just phrases that, man, that's really performing your statutes. Inclining my heart. And I start at praying that and asking myself questions. What, is it, what would it mean for me to incline my heart to your word? What would it mean for me to perform your statutes? And maybe I'm journaling about that and I'm praying, God, help me figure this out. I, I want to honor you with this in my time. And so I'm meditating upon the text and I'm reading it and I'm reading it and I'm praying as I'm doing that. And then I read it a third time. Your testimonies are my heritage forever, for they are the joy of my heart. I incline my heart to perform your statutes forever to the end. And I start as I'm going through that third time thinking, how do I live this? What does this mean to live? What, do I, what does this look like? What does it mean now that I incline my heart to your word? So every morning when I get up, I want to I make this my habit, my daily beginning. Maybe it's during lunch. Maybe it's on a break. Maybe it's at night. But I want to hold this with me all day. What I, would, what I would offer to you is if you take a verse or two like that and you You spend five to ten minutes in the morning just thinking about it, writing words down, meditating upon it, that you now can take that with you all day long. Here's something kind of cool to do. Take a scrap of piece of paper and write that verse down really quick and carry it in your pocket all day long. Well, I'm not allowed to study the Bible at work. I'm not allowed to do this. I mean, I got a Halls wrapper right here. And I could write it on that and just read it through the day. I incline my heart to your statutes all day long. This idiot next to me I work with is being a jerk right now. I I don't want to punch him in the face, but I incline my heart to your statutes all day long. I I don't, I don't, I turn the other cheek or whatever. You you, you carry that with you. You meditate upon it and, and you're now living the text. Help me become the text. You pray and you live the text. You pray and you live the text. There's nothing wrong with devotional readings and different things we have, but I fear that too often it's this. Okay, what, Psalm 119, 97 to whatever? Or, or say those 111 to 112. Uh, your testimonies are my heritage forever for the joy of my heart. And in my mind, I'm thinking, I got to get out to work really quick. I got to get breakfast. I got to get, the, I didn't get gas. I got to get all this stuff done. And I climb my heart to perform statues forever and to the end. Check, I did my devotion today. God loves me and I'm good. Okay, that's fine. But the pattern should be pray and live the text. Pray and live the text. Pray and live the text. Carry it with me all day long. The goal of biblical studies is not just to memorize facts or to get through it. It's not just memorizing facts. It's not just, I mean, I mean, it's a relationship. It's a relationship with Jesus, and it's a relationship with the text. I could sit here and give you a lot of different stats, like a baseball card about my life, but it's a relationship. It's a heart. It's, it's, She's my life. It's a relationship. It's the same with the text. I know a lot of people that know this book inside and out, but don't live it. (laughs) It's not just to get through it. It's not just to memorize a bunch of of facts. It's to become and live what we read. what, What we read. Read this book. Try it. Start this month. 
read this book in order to live. Study this book in order to get to know better a relationship with Jesus Christ and what he has for me here and now. I wrote this down, jot this down. This, will, this, will, this is it. This will be the last thing, okay? This will, this will blow you away. I think this is just fantastic. But I, but I wrote this, so it's not the Bible. But enter the world of the text in order to live for Christ in the world. I like that too. Enter, oh, that's, enter the world of the text in order to live for Christ in the world. Psalm 119, I think it's verse 6, says, How can a young person keep their way pure? By living according to your word. Too many of us are going out there trying to live for Jesus, and we don't know who he is. Too many of us tell everybody about Jesus and what we think, but we've never read the book. We don't know the author. We don't know who wrote it. We don't know anything about him, really. We just memorized a bunch of facts. And we're dangerous. Enter the world of the text. Dive deeply into this. Spend time with it in order to live for Christ in the world. It might take a little more time, but I think it's worth it. Amen? Band, if you come forward and we'll... We'll close this morning. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this morning and just time to gather together, to, to hear together, read your word. And I pray, I pray that you guide us this new year. I pray that you guide us as, as followers of Christ in our study of your word. I pray that this church would be different in the way in which we study and read the text that would transform our lives for how we live the text, how we become the text for the world around us. Holy Spirit, guide us in all these things so that truly people around this community could meet people from this church family and say, there's something different about them. And it comes from our relationship with you, with your son, and our relationship with the text. Guide us in these things. Guide our feet so that we might live for you. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.